guys, welcome to Grammar and Writing, Lesson 64. This lesson is going to be pretty short, I hope, which I'm sure that you are very, very excited about. Um, we're going to skip vocabulary again for the first week that we are back for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm not even going to bother to list them because I'm sure you don't care, you just care that we don't have it. So here we go. Understanding descriptive writing is what we're talking about today. So you should have your writing page out and ready to go. Descriptive writing uses sensory words to create images. Sensory words are words that have to do with your senses. They stimulate your senses. They get you to think about tasting something, feeling something, seeing something, hearing it. Um, those are all your, your senses, smelling something. I know I was missing one. In a description, when you're writing, you appeal to the reader's senses of sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. You want them to be able to picture these things. So a good description helps your reader experience the person, place, or thing that you are describing. They're able to feel like they're actually there because they, they feel like they can hear the things that are going on, that they can the smell the food that's being cooked. They can, they can taste the food that's being cooked. All of those are um, important. And so um, a good descriptive writing will do that. When you're reading, would you be very interested if you couldn't um, picture anything that's going on? Not really, right? It's very flat. Most of you might be thinking, well, I don't really do a whole lot of reading, so I have no idea. Well, I can assure you that if you do do reading, it's more interesting. You're going to want to read it if it has descriptions. Now, people can go overboard on the description and there's no action. I don't like that. But I would not be, if I can't picture what's going on, if I can't get kind of an idea, then I don't like it. Why do, why do you think people like movies sometimes more than books? Not everyone in the world, but there are people who like movies more than books. A lot of people. Well, because you can actually see what's going on, hear it. You can, when you see, you know, um, a nice hot sizzling pizza come out of an oven on a TV show, it makes you want pizza, right? So the difference there is that your senses are a little bit more stimulated sometimes with TV. So a good writer will be able to stimulate those same senses when they're writing. So you are training to be good writers, and that's your goal now, is to be someone who can get those senses to be fired up when people are reading, so that they want to uh, keep reading, so that they are interested in what you've written. So here are some examples, some descriptive words. So the first column that you see, these are either adjectives or adverbs, and the second column, those are verbs because you don't just need to use good adverbs and adverbs and verb, bleh, adverbs and adjectives, there we go. You need to use good specific verbs, specific nouns. All of those things contribute to having good descriptive writing. So timid, that's another word for like quiet and shy, it, but it gives you a good picture. You can picture somebody, you know, kind of shrinking back, moving towards the background, not really wanting to speak up, almost like they're growing smaller. That's someone who is timid. Loudly, okay, that one's kind of a, not really a extremely descriptive word, but it's a simple descriptive word, it works. It gives you the idea that something was loud. Without that word loudly, you don't know what kind of noise is happening. It could be a normal noise, it could be a quiet noise, or it could be a loud noise. You have no idea. But that word loudly clarifies that and you have an idea of what kind of noise is going on. Gigantic. That means really, really big. But that's better than just the word big because the word big, it gives, the, it gives you the idea that something is grande, but how grande? Muy, muy grande or solo un poquito grande? Eh, big is not specific enough. Gigantic, that's a good word to show you that it's really, really big. Content, not content here, content. This is, you know, satisfecho, kind of, it gives you the, the idea of, ah, I'm, I'm happy with life, is content. All right, let's talk about the verbs. Crashing, crashing. 
So crashing is the idea that something is falling over and it's making a lot of noise, maybe even breaking when it falls. That's, uh, that's a lot of um, words that I just use to define crashing. So I'm able to condense that into one verb, one idea down into one verb of crashing. You can picture it in your head. If I say that the boxes came crashing to the floor, you can, you can almost hear it in your mind as they fall. But if I just say the box fell to the floor, Okay, eh, maybe it just, you know, went thump, and that's it. Crashing is the idea that it, it made a mess, even. So that verb is more specific and more descriptive. Shuffling. Shuffling is when a person is walking, but they're not really picking up their feet. So their feet, they, they go slowly, and their feet kind of scrape the ground, and they make like a, a little noise like that. That's shuffling. Devoured, that's when you eat everything really fast. You're devouring. Um, so again, that gives you a better idea of what's going on than if I just said, he ate everything quickly. Okay, I know he ate everything quickly, but if I say devoured, you can picture him like shoving with both hands his food into his mouth. Sprint, okay, that's another verb for run. Again, this verb is just something that is more specific. It gives you the idea of how they're running. A sprint would be more of a, a short but quick run from one place to another, they use sprint. But not quite as uh, fast as maybe a, um, a dash or something like that. So now it's your turn. You're gonna complete the understanding descriptive writing on page seven. You're gonna be analyzing a description. So you have to read the character sketches that are below and answer the questions that follow. So a character sketch, that is basically a little story that is used to describe a particular person. So this is the first one. It says, Ray was speechless. She looked around the bakery and saw Mrs. Hammond standing behind the counter in a starched white apron big, good-natured, and jolly. Jolly means happy. She was like the bakery itself, warm, sweet-smelling, and clean. So this was Ray's new home, and here was her new mother. Not bad, Ray thought, a smile tugging at her lips. Okay, so number one is who is described in this passage? It means who is the character sketch about? You have two choices. Is it about Ray or is it about Mrs. Hammond? We see Ray's thoughts, but is she describing herself or is she describing Mrs. Hammond? She's describing Mrs. Hammond, isn't she? That's the person who has the starched white apron. We know where she is. She's behind the counter of the bakery. We know that she is a larger woman because she says big, good natured. So she probably has a smile on her face, jolly. Says so she's like the bakery itself, warm, sweet smelling, clean. So now we can even picture the bakery. Um, so that's who we're really describing. To which senses does the writer appeal? For each sense, give an example from the passage. Okay, so remember, these are, your senses are sight, smell, taste, touch, hear. It doesn't have to appeal to all of them, but think about it. It does appeal to more than one. I'm going to give you an example. Your sense of smell. They use the word sweet smelling. So that gives you an idea of what maybe you smell. Maybe I always smell cinnamon buns, mm, warm, fresh out of the oven with icing drizzled on top. Okay, so um, that would be your sense of smell. So smell is appealed to by the word sweet smelling. So you could write smell and then sweet smelling. So you need to do more than just that. You need to write at least three more descriptions. Okay, you can use it, you can, by the three descriptions, for example, if you want to say that they appeal to your taste, it you can do two different things that appeal to your taste, two different examples. Okay, that's part of the three descriptions. All right, what comparison does the writer use to describe Mrs. Hammond? What does the writer um, compare Mrs. Hammond to? She is like something. So something there, and Mrs. Hammond, 
are alike. What is it? Okay, so that's the first one. That gives you an idea of what you need to do, and then you'll need to finish this and then do the second one right below it. Okay? Let me know if you have any questions, if you are confused at all about what you need to do on this page. Have fun with it. Use your um, creativity as you answer. Enjoy.